Many people complain to me that the Earth must revolve around the Sun, and that it is not only wrong to say the Sun revolves around the Earth, but that it is physically impossible. They say that since the Earth is much smaller than the Sun, and therefore has much less gravity, it must revolve around the Sun, and not vice versa. Well, no one who knows physics would argue with this point. It was the foundation of Isaac Newton's physics in the late 1600s, and he was the first to give what appeared to be mathematical proof for the heliocentric system of Copernicus, Galileo, and Kepler. But what most people do not know is that Newton also recognized that if one expanded the gravitational laboratory beyond our solar system, a geocentric system was certainly possible, which at that time was called the Tychonic Geocentric System. On the last page of his famous Principia Mathematica, a page that had been lost for centuries but was recently found, Newton said these words, In order for the Earth to be at rest in the center of the Sun, planets, and comets, there is required both universal gravity and another force in addition that acts on all bodies equally according to the quantity of matter in each of them and is equal and opposite to the accelerative gravity with which the Earth tends to the Sun. In this way, the Earth can truly remain in equilibrium between these two forces and be at rest, and thus, celestial bodies can move around the Earth at rest, as in the Tychonic system. It so happens that this other force was identified nearly 200 years after Newton by the physicist Ernst Mach, and later incorporated into Einstein's general relativity. For them, it was just as viable to say that the universe rotates around a fixed Earth as it was to say that the Earth rotates in a fixed universe, since the forces and geometry are reciprocal. The lesson to be learned is that Newton had no right to limit the gravitational laboratory to our solar system, and he had no right to make the universe inert and immovable.